talk to us about this referendum because the, the critical word here is illegal. It's not allowed under Spain's constitution. So do we still expect this referendum vote to go ahead? That's the whole point. So uh, on the one hand, we get the Catalan government saying this vote will happen. And like you mentioned, the Spanish government saying it's not going to happen because it just goes against the Constitution. Now, the key question is, will the vote happen? We think, and this is based on our reporting, that there will be some votes and polling stations that will open. But to think of a vote that is legally binding and that the international community would recognize as fair, that's probably not going to happen. Again, sources very close to the government are telling us that the Catalan government it's not going to have the logistics to hold this vote and to put it frankly just in simple terms they just don't have the money to carry out mm. the vote uh, Maria tell us what specifically is the central national government doing to prevent this vote from happening I mean, they've tackled two fronts. Like you've said, they're sending an extra police because they don't want to have riots in the streets. They don't want to have confrontation. They, you know, might actually uh, jeopardize the normal lives of people who live in Barcelona, for example. So they want to give this impression that life is just going on as normal. At the same time, and this is just so crucial and key, it's the financial measures that when it uh, basically announced yesterday. To give some context for international viewers, Catalonia, just like many other regions in Spain, can't actually go to financial markets to cover their Mm. It needs. So in t basically they turn to the central government and they ask for funds. So what the central government now is doing is that instead of giving this money to the Catalan government, they're making payments directly. So they're not diverting funds to the Catalan government. They're not letting them actually manage their own money. Uh. They're doing this directly. And this is kind of cutting off funding. Yeah, and the Catalans argue that they give away, they subsidize the rest of the country. So if they could just operate independently, then actually financially they believe they would be, um, they would be better off. But, Maria, just go back to the idea of this referendum, because I was there for the last referendum vote that they held, and while a majority of people actually wanted the opportunity to have their say and to vote, it was only around 40% of people, actually, according to current polls, that want to break free and want independence. So do you think that's why the market is kind of ignoring this, really? Because the bottom line is, if a vote was held, separation wouldn't occur, according to the polls. Well, that's actually a great point that you're uh, mentioning. There's two things that I think are super important and we need to separate. One is the this desire to actually hold a vote and a very different one is to actually want to break away from Spain. That's one issue. And I think when you talk about why the market is not concerned, it's also because precisely what you just mentioned. We've been here before. We've seen this before. There was a 2014 vote, 2015 regional election framed as a referendum. We've been here before. Investors have seen this and yet nothing ever happens. And at the same time, I think we need to keep this in mind. Spain was very different at the time. What we've seen is an economic turnaround, it's very strong economic fundamentals. The economy is growing 3% on an annual basis, strong job creation. So the fundamentals for Spain are much, much better. And at the same time, mm. what we're seeing is that investors are just not buying this anymore. We've been here mm. before. Nothing really happens. That's a really important point. Yet for Mariano Rajoy, this could this could be painful for him. He has a, he has a weak government. It's a minority government. What does this mean for him? That's so crucial. Like you mentioned, it's a minority government. I would say it's a weak minority government. At the same time, he's been pulled from all sides because some of his rivals really want him to be get, you know, to be really tough and get tough on this and get it done. At the same time, some of his rivals that he needs uh, at the same time to get votes, like you know, get a budget done, they're saying actually you should sit down and listen to what the Catalans are saying because some of the complaints, like you know, wanting better regional finance and more infrastructure spending, they're actually fair points that they're, they want to talk about. So he's been pulled from a lot of sites and I think the market could react to that. If we start to get the sense that Rajoy can no longer work with this parliament, that could be a, a point where jitters catch, actually kick in. Maria, you're in Madrid. Is there any sympathy here for the Catalans as a result of the response that the, the central government here is making and the belief that perhaps they're being a little bit heavy handed because the risk here is if they're too heavy handed then people in Catalonia that actually weren't going to vote against go hang on a second we're being repressed. That's key and the government knows that they know that they have to keep this very proportional because they don't want to play into this line of being an oppressive government that's trying to quash the free will of the people, if you will. In Madrid, however, there's this idea that, you know, the Constitution, it's its a key piece of, it's just so crucial for the democratic order of this country, and everyone really has to obey it. So if we decide that the Constitution no longer applies overnight, that kind of just takes away any kind of, you know, democratic uh, fundamentals that, you know, really 
really shape the political life of politicians, but also everyday Spaniards.